Hello everybody, welcome back to more Minecraft. In this one, we're going to go through how to build an iron farm. This is going to get you infant iron. We've got two designs, kind of, and we're going to go through some mechanics as well. So please use the chapters if you want to skip around and get to the bits that you are the most interested in as we go through this video. First up then, we're going to go through the simple version. And for that, all we're going to want to do is one, two, three, four, five. Create a five by five square. And we're going to dig this down pretty far. One, two, three, four. Well, I can't count five square, right? So let me just get this square started, like so. Of course, I've switched into creative mode to make this a little bit quicker, but this doesn't change how this works. And I'll show you our survival version of this once we have got this built. Now, to go through some materials, just so that you've got everything. Otherwise, you're going to be like going to and from the area a lot. I'd prefer to try to avoid that. Water and lava, both going to be essential. And you are going to need to have a hopper. So that's going to be something like nine. So you need about 10 iron to get this started. Uh, but once you've got this done, you'll have way more than that coming back to you. You're going to need two pieces of glass and one glass pane as a minimum, depending on how your storage is going. You may want to change that around a little bit, but this should be pretty much enough. You'll need at least 10 beds. 20 is pretty good. 30 is the most that you'll get out of this. We'll go over that later on, but I'll place 30 in this one just so you guys will see how you'll fit those. One job block for each bed that you have because the villagers are going to need to work the job block, which is what's going to create the iron golems, which is what it is we're going to be farming. Again, more on the mechanics of this later on. Two chests, and that's outside of your hopper. Of course, it takes a chest to build a hopper, but two chests, that's going to be your basic storage system. Obviously, you can extend that. In case you don't know, you can add more hoppers underneath the hopper to another chest and extend the storage you really shouldn't need that unless you're doing a lot of afk farming some ladders to get around obviously if you're not in creative mode you're not gonna be able to fly i will not be flying through this video and you guys will see me using ladders to get up and down some of the areas that we need to get in and out of trapdoors because i like to make a vertical entrance and exit to the storage system once we get this done we are later on in the series gonna have a way to fire this back up but this is aimed at new beginners so we won't be using any soul sand so we will want to be getting down to the storage and we need two buttons this is crazily enough two wood buttons is going to hold the lava that is what we're going to be using for that we have our five by five square here and i did just readjust it i did actually go six across on one of them because apparently whilst i'm talking completely unable to count and we want to take this down by around 10. Technically, this is overkill, but I prefer to be safe about it. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so I was on, I'm going to cheat and fly for a second. I was on 64, so we want to go down to 54. And we need to hollow this whole thing out, right? This is basically the kill chamber. Don't worry, we are going to be covering this up later on. So that's also not going to be a problem. But just go ahead, get this all emptied out. It's going to be a giant square in the hole. All right, then you're going to have a hole or something like this. Obviously, I promised I wouldn't fly whilst building, so I've got a bit of a roof on here already. Don't worry about that. The iron golems should not be spawning on there by the time I'm finished, which is all good. From this point, then, we want to pick a side that's going to collect all of the iron. OK, and we're going to, have to be taking out one block on that side. This is actually where your hopper is going to go. I can place that now against that block, and that's not actually going to be an issue for us at all. In addition, the two blocks above that are going to be glass. But we probably want to go through that way because there's something that we want to do over in this chamber. So we're going to remove this one extra block and we're going to walk through and we're just going to make ourselves a little place that we're able to stand in so that we can actually get to where the chest is going to be, which is right in front of me here. So we want to place our two glass blocks. You probably want to replace that block there as well whilst we're in here. So two glass blocks. The reason we want that to be glass blocks is because when we attach the chest to this that's still going to allow us to open the chest if i were to do that say here we actually can't open the chest when it's under solid blocks but for whatever reason if we do that with glass it still allows us to access the chest from here we want to make our exit and i like to come across one from here because that should bring us in line with the middle of where the kill chamber is and then we're gonna mine straight back up whilst using the ladders to be able to get back out All right, I'm going to use that to get up to the top, jump on out. This is where I'm going to use one of my trapdoors. So let's go ahead, cover that up. 
And now we want to be able to get back down. This shouldn't kill you as far as drops go, but in case you don't know, if you use the water at the last second as you're coming down, that will actually prevent you from taking any damage and mean that you will be pretty safe as you're coming on down here. Now then, what I recommend doing is on the opposite side to where our kill chamber is going to be, we're going to make a hole in the ground. And this is actually where I want to put some more ladders so that we can get into this angle if we need to during the build. So I'm just going to ladder back up to the top. And now we're going to make a four more down right here. Okay, so the one that we came down there, and then we actually want a three high room. Future Joe here with a bit of an edit. I originally said we need to dig down three blocks, like I said right here. Look, this has put me out slightly on my build, but you guys should come down by two instead when you're carrying on with this and that'll mean that you're going to end up with two rows of beds if you want to reach 30 don't worry we've got a fix for that okay because we want to have two rows of beds like this this is because if we go too far above where the villagers are they won't detect the beds for the sake of expanding the village and therefore having the room to make more villagers if you want to have 30 villagers you can see we're going to come out by six instead of five it's going to put 12 on each side like this and as you can see when it comes to placing the beds we're going to go ahead we're going to place two blocks in put a bed on top of it and then take the two blocks underneath to add in extra beds we're then going to want to do the same thing on the other side this is one two three four five six as you can see here so 12 this side here makes 24 we still want to reach 30 so i'm going to create a gap over what is my access to the villager chamber below and we're going to do the same thing over here on both sides and then to allow us to get to 30 we're going to actually do the same thing over this way but we want to have the pillows facing towards the center if at all possible and then I'm now going to go ahead and dig my way out by going upwards. I'm just going to block my way out because I kind of want this to be filled. That's going to give us a room that looks something like this, where we have 14 beds on each side and then two beds at the end so that we have our 30. Again, if, if you made any mistakes or anything like this, if yours is a bit too high, put carpets on the ground to make sure that no iron golems spawn in here. And now we can continue letting the villagers breed down below. And that's going to have us look something like this. So we can see our storage system right here. You can see that the storage system would actually end up invading the, the bedroom a little bit if we're not careful. And then we're going to bring our access over to where the ladders are. Add the ladders here. So this is almost going to be our access shaft to all of the different layers. Now, this is going to be the bedroom. But for now, we don't actually want to put any beds in here because we want to continue digging down. And the reason we want to continue digging down is because this is the hole that we're going to be pushing some villagers down. We want to come all the way down here. We're going to use water for this, of course. And this is actually going to be the villager chamber right here. We want this to be too high, so we don't want them to be jumping around. And we definitely don't want iron golems to be spawning down here. They shouldn't actually spawn this far down, because they should always try to spawn above the beds. But just in case, we want to be pretty safe. And we can actually make this a little bit bigger, but I want to make this 5x5 five five first, so that we know where we're going. I've got my 5x5 five five square, and I know that we want to go out this way. So that we can meet up with where our ladders were. So now we have a nice complete shaft where we can get to all of the different layers. Nice and easily once this farm is finished. Of course we'll be able to seal this up at the end. So like I can already probably get, get away with doing all of this. But we are going to need just a bit of a hole. So that we can drop some villagers down there later on. Before we start bringing villagers though. I think the best thing to do is to make sure that your room is the correct size. Well, mine's not even 5x5 five five right now. And if you're going to go with 30, what I recommend doing is going out by one extra. And now you should have plenty of space to be put, starting to put in your worker blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and place mine now. Which gives me 23. And then what we can do is we can actually build them up in the, in the middle as well. 23. And actually, I think we're going to go out by one extra. So we're going to come, come out by one on the back end. Okay, so when it comes to fitting 30 job blocks in here, what seems to work is making the room that is, is an 8 by 7 room. And then we can put the four in the middle right here and just go around the edges of the room. And this will be 30 job blocks, which is what we need. For now, we're going to take this one out so we can get in and out. But once we get villagers in here, the intention is going to be to lock them in. So we'll probably do something like put the job block in and then put a glass window in so that the babies don't escape. Once they're all adults again, you can leave them like this. But just while the babies are there, you don't want them kind of getting all over the place. So that's what we'll do. Our next job is going to be to get some villagers in. So what I want to do for that is we want to come down the ladder that we made earlier and we want to put the water in a place where it's going to flow over and go down the hole. We want it to be so that when we bring the villagers in, they'll go ahead, they'll hit this and they'll go all the way down like so. We will have to be pretty quick about making sure that they don't take any damage, but that's what we want. OK, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to make a hole at the top so that we can, so that we can aim the villagers to this water here and have them go all the way in to 
into our storage chamber for the villagers. All right then, so once you've been off and fetched some villagers, obviously I talked about transporting villagers in the previous video, um, but basically I like to use a boat. So to go over this real quick, if you put a lead on a boat, you can pull it around as you can see. To get over ledges and stuff, all you need to do is slowly get to the ledge, once you get to the ledge that you want to get over, place the water down, and then you're able to pull them up. You can get over pretty much anything by using this method, and should be pretty accessible to a lot of people. We're obviously not going to recommend using something like railways or something like this, because we don't have loads of iron right now. That's why we're building an iron farm. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pull these over. And we're going to pull them in such a way, that hopefully they'll end up over the water. That's what we want. Now I'm going to choose to push them the last little bit, so we're just going to come to this side. I'm going to push the boat in. And again, down again. Come on. If we're going to take some extra blocks out. Are you, are you seriously stuck on the ladder? Come on, down you go. And you, down you go. They're in there now. I'm going to go ahead and... Let's block, let's block this water up. I'm going to get down there with the villagers. Make sure we get some light in here. We don't want no, we don't want no zombies spawning in with our villagers right now. So being as these are adult ones, we're going to quickly get out glass back i suppose a uh, trap door would actually work better here so what we're actually going to trap these guys in with is a trap door we're going to put it on the top block and then flick it closed like that and then the uh, any babies they won't be able to get out so the next thing we need to do is to formally make this into a village so to do that we need to start placing beds future joe here again this is where we officially start placing the beds in the village i just want to reiterate that and i've got to be careful here because my village is actually active and the iron farm is actually already working at this point as it will be for you once you start getting the villagers bed and breeding with your beds so what you want to do is you want to have the beds too high as you can see right here now i'm gonna i'm not gonna place a bed because that's gonna cause the villagers to breed and if there's more villagers than beds then that is going to cause issues when it comes to the actual farm so what you'll want to do is you want to place two blocks you'll want to place a bed on the two blocks remove the two blocks and then place your second bed underneath the first one this is going to allow you to stack your beds too high as we have done here and as i said before and as you'll see as we go forward in the video we'll place these around the edge like this so that we can have a total of 30 30, which is allowing us to have 30 villagers down here which are all nicely working their blocks now and causing us to farm the iron and what i recommend doing is we want to get them along the top cool that's going to turn this into a village in an official capacity and just in case we're going to place our carpets on the ground right now you should only need to go in the middle because the rest of this is obviously going to be filled with beds and this just ensures that we don't get no iron golem craziness going off in here and now that we've actually got some beds down we can start breeding the villagers underneath us whilst we are increasing the capacity of the village this is just going to speed things up slightly so i'm going to come on back down and i'm going to drop these guys some food in case you don't know when it comes to feeding villagers we need to feed them to make them breed and we obviously want to reach 30 so we're going to need quite a bit of food you can either use bread carrots beetroots or potatoes note that the only one of these that can be processed is the bread if you cook the potatoes that won't work go ahead and feed your villagers just drop them the food like so so that as we place the beds the villagers underneath us will start breeding now then let me just go through placing these beds again to make sure i've doubly covered this make sure obviously when it comes to placing the bed you need to place blocks first then place the bed and then obviously for the next level after that we'll place another bed i like to do this in complete rows so i'll go block 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 place the beds in and then remove all the dirt blocks and then keep on placing the beds like so now then if you want to have access to down here and you will need a little bit of access because we are going to need to cull them as they make nitwits what i suggest that you do is make a hole at this end like this and then we're going to head on down we're going to put a block in and it only needs to be this top block right here and then we're going to put some ladders on it and we'll be able to climb this and the villagers won't it's a little bit janky but it allows us to get in and out without the villagers being able to get in and out which is just going to be useful for us and now what we need to do is wait for them to breed so just check on them every now and then we need them to get all the way up to their 30 and what you'll find eventually is that the iron golems will start spawning in here so we need to go down there and just fix this up so that it's ready when the iron golems begin appearing so in my case i'm going to get rid of this uh this water source block here because we're going to want the iron golems to go this way the iron golem wants to die over the top of this so let's get that put in right now this is going to be the kill mechanism part of the video so what we want is we want one glass pane in this corner we want to place two buttons we want one here and one here and then we can place the lava 
in the corner so this is now prime so we're going to keep this ladder here so we can get up and down as we please but once iron golem starts spawning in here all we'll need to do is place water in this corner and that's going to force them into the lava where they'll die and the lava will drop into the hopper and thereby be stored by the chest so let me just fast forward the video it's going to take a while for those villagers to breed so this took me around 30 minutes to get this fully operational so it shouldn't be too difficult once you have this done obviously you will have to keep on going down rebreeding the villagers allowing those new babies to breed and getting them to man don't walk into the lava i really want to show more than one iron golem up here the cats have quite viciously been pushing the iron golems into the lava on their own which is making it difficult basically what i wanted to tell everybody was the reason you want to go for either 10 20 or 30 villagers is because each 10 villagers you have in your village increases the capacity for iron golems by one the reason this is important is because obviously that iron golem is not dead right now which means if we only had 10 villagers we wouldn't be able to spawn another one so whilst that iron golem is dying the village isn't ticking up to its next iron golem which is a problem so we want it to be doing that so that we can have the next one on its way already so i would say having 20 is the bare minimum having a capacity of three means that if you get a second one spawn in whilst the other one is dying you're still ticking up to the third one and that is kind of where the end of your efficiency is going to come so once this is all done we want to add the water in and that's now going to put the golem into dying in there and as you saw the iron goes into the hopper and into the chest that is the basic and easiest iron farm achieved now what you do is well do whatever you want technically speaking you've got two choices with the top right here you can see that during the night time mobs will come over because they will want to attack the iron golem and they will want to reach your villagers so you have two choices you could either cover this up and build your base as normal the beds are deep enough at 10 down that you can go ahead build your base up here and you won't really need to bother with anything i like to still retain access to the farm itself just in case you need to get in there and fix something so you might want to put a trapdoor on the top of this and that is going to allow you to just get in and out of there as and when you please the other alternative is you could in fact leave this open and line the edges with trapdoors the mobs will recognize this as a full block and try to walk in. That's going to cause them to go in there and die along with the iron golems. Now, fair game. I haven't done this for elongated periods of time, and I'm not entirely sure if the creeper will try to blow up the iron golem and thereby break the farm. So try that at your own risk, but it is a potential thing that you could be doing to add extra rewards to your iron farm. But that's it now. It's all set up. You can just literally sit any way you like i like to usually go behind where the chest is sit here and wait and as you can see you'll be gathering iron <laughs> that's where the cats have pushed those golems into it that's kind of funny the uh, the cats viciously destroyed five iron golems before i'd even put the water in there on to the mechanics part of the video this bit is quite complicated and i'm going to cover quite a bit mostly focusing on the beds now technically speaking job blocks and the bell but we're not including a bell in anything that i'm doing also can have an effect on this so just bear in mind that if you move on to the third part of this video and you start including bells that could also affect some of this but mostly this is all about measuring where the potential center of your village is okay this is how we are able to contain where the iron golems are able to spawn whilst also being able to make a cool looking village and retaining access to all of the different villages whilst using and placing all of their job blocks which is what we use to manipulate their trades now i don't want to go too much into villager trading that's not really the remit of this video but you will have access to being able to do all of the different villager trades and making a village that looks like it's actually a working village rather than just a hole in the floor or a huge box in the sky and i'm going to go through how this is going to work right now the raised bed in the middle is a proposed not necessarily guaranteed center of the village the game is going to work, look for a bed then the village bell and then a work block to base the center of the village on in that order so if there's a bed it's going to say okay one of those beds is the center of the village but we cannot guarantee or know exactly which bed that is going to be however what i like to do is i like to pick the middle one so that we can get our initial measurement that's what we're going to do right now we're going to assume this right now is the middle of where a village is or a village that we want to build is that's the point of what we're going to go through right now this is probably going to be one of the longest worded videos i've ever done and i hope it's okay but i want to really be clear or as clear as it can be how this works from the center of the village which is going to be the pillow of 
one of the beds, particularly if it's one that we are custom making, like the one that we're going to do at the back end of this video. From there, the village, the actual global village size, is actually going to be 32 blocks in each direction, including this part of the bed, right? Which is why we've got this measured out. So that makes it a total of a 65 by 65 box. Okay, so if I look at this from the top, you're going to see this is a 65 by 65 square. That is the horizontal area of the village. In addition to that, it's also going to go 12 blocks up and 12 blocks down. Now, I haven't measured the 12 blocks down because I don't want to build under my village. But if you wanted to make your own little dimensions model, like I have done with mine, you could bring this down an additional 12. And that is going to show you where the additional kind of underneath space of your village is going to be. Now, because we don't know exactly which bed it is that is going to be the center, if you're trying to do this within the confines and make it a working iron farm, as well as a working village where we can start using trades maybe make it look nice and all this other stuff each bed that you place is going to take one off of the potential safe area okay the safe area and that's what we're trying to narrow down here for your iron farm which i've rec which i've represented by my blue platform here this is where we're targeting all of the iron golems to spawn and die and your potential build space so if we place like a job block anywhere within this red block block right here that's actually not even going to affect our iron farm at all you can place as many of these as you want actually and then so long as all of your villagers are working then that is going to be actually 100 fine however if we go outside of the red box so if i put one up here that now changes the bounds of the village because let's say the village has decided that this is now the, the center of the village. Well, that's obviously one below my proposed central. So that's two higher. And now the center of the village can raise by one. And that's a problem because that is what is going to change where the iron golems spawn hope that's clear so each time we go in the opposite direction to something so if i come one to the left with a bed that takes one off of the safe zone the safest zone for me to build in now of course this actual 65 by 65 box is massive so we need to know that the more beds we have down the more of a trade-off there's going to be in terms of space now it's not that drastic when you think about it right so when we come across by one two three four five each way that's only going to take 10 off of the potential build space which is what my wooden blocks are in the horizontal space that you can see right there so that is going to take 10 off and that makes this something like a 55 square box so five off each side these would have been 32 that's going to be 27 it's still a pretty big area as you can see and we're going to look at this kind of in a in a bit of a more open way over there in a second. Now to narrow down where we can build things without it affecting the iron farm. So when it comes to the golems, they can spawn within this green box, which is five up, one, two, three, four, five, five up from the bed and six down. But the advantage we have with this is that the golem is always going to try to spawn on the highest block that it can be spawned upon. So what that means is if we fill in all of the potential spaces that it could spawn, we can narrow it down to exactly where we want it to spawn, which is what we did in the first part of the video when we dug down and made that five by five square. That's why I can have my beds all this way out and they'll still spawn there because that is within the five up. And I suppose I didn't talk about the horizontal range. We have the horizontal range of eight. So because that is within eight, even, even from this one, it's within eight horizontally and within the five vertically. So long as all of these other blocks that it could spawn on are unavailable, it will spawn here, which is what I've done this yellow blockage thing here for. Because if this one was the center, then I'd have to make sure that there was no free space within this part right here for the iron golem to spawn on. Now, this doesn't have to be completely blocked up. You can also block the golem spawn with something like a button. You can block it with carpet. And my children told me you can uh, you can block it with um, spaded soil, but I haven't tested that because usually my soil is way higher than that. But if you put carpets all under anything, you can still have like a nice cool looking hallway underground if you wanted, and you wouldn't have to worry about your iron, iron golems not spawning in the place that you want them to be. When we put all of this together, this purple layer right here, which I've done like, I've given it some leeway, so that you can see is the lowest safe place that I would be able to build on based on the highest bed. Now, of course, each bed down that we come makes it less safe when we get to the highest point. And so going down one takes this yellow one off one level just for us. So in theory, we know we can go 12 high, but if we're two layers, technically we can only go 11 high. And if you go three layers of bed, you can go 10 high, but we also can't go too low so that the iron 
golem doesn't spawn on our ground level, which in a working farm looks a little bit something like this. I have measured this out already. You can see that we've got the beds underneath and even with quite wide beds, I right, went quite wide on this. So long as I do things like I put carpets on the outside of here, the iron golems will spawn on the inside of this and die in the lava. I can actually have all of my villagers on top with the work blocks and I could in theory spread them out as far as all of my wooden barriers that are placed right here and have myself a fairly cool looking village. I'm purposely trying not to give perfect uh, specifications for this box right here because I want you to be able to work out your own village size depending on what you want or the space that you have to work with because as I said before if you were to make this the center of your village if you come out by two like this way and then out by another two another way that's all just going to be taken off and allows you to customize your own workspace and just so you guys can see it's been working pretty reliably for quite a while don't worry too much about this anybody following the series this is something that we're going to be looking at later on we need to get to the nether before we can build a contraption that allows us to send loot upwards so we're just gonna have to wait for that one just a final reiteration on specifications then from your from the center of where you want your village to be you can go from the center of where you want your village beds to be you can go up by up to 12 you can go out by up to 32 which gives you 32 each side which creates a 65 by 65 square and those dimensions are reduced by one for each block that you place a bed pillow right which means that actually Actually, if you put one this side, it's actually going to change it by two from the opposite side if you think about the, ver the vertical direction of the bed with a minimum distance above the beds of, of seven and a maximum of 11 minus one for each level of beds you add to the build. When it comes to the actual golem kill chamber, we have a maximum build height of five, minus one for each deep you go with the beds, and eight to the side, again, minus one for each one you go to the side of the beds. And you have to make sure that all of these ones, so in this, in this example, I'd have to coat all of this in carpet, if I were building my beds out to the side. And within that range, the golem is always going to attempt to spawn on the highest set of blocks. So make sure that everything is either filled or is deed spawnable with something like either buttons or carpet. And for the last thing, just in case you don't know already, which is, I guess is potentially true, all village star spawns have to be at least 100 blocks away from another village. Otherwise, they're going to try to link together and that is going to screw things up. In addition to that, as I said before, if you try to place a job block close to the village and this gets linked to by a villager, that is going to change where the center of the village is and it's going to spoil your spawn. So do try to be accurate about where you place the limitations of your potential build space. For those that have been following along or visiting the streams this is our current village we obviously have our village breeder attached via the flume just there which delivers us villagers as and when we need them and then we deliver them to where we want them so that we can control as and when they arrive have a few cool buildings in here this is going to be like a little trade hall so we've got a couple of food people we've got a butcher we've got a shepherd and then all of these are perfect but we wanted to make sure we have all of the crafting blocks within the village so that means that we do have to have at least one of each villager to make sure that we have that in here we're going to end up placing some stone masons that hasn't been done yet obviously in here we have our tool weaponsmith and blacksmiths so that we can purchase all of our diamond gear this actually means if you are following along with the series you will now have complete diamond gear and diamond tools without ever having farmed a single diamond which is sick and over this way we like to have a load of fletchers because selling sticks for emeralds and then using emeralds to buy arrows is also quite useful we haven't got ourselves a bow yet in the series but that will be coming pretty shortly we also have a little fishing area on its way and this is where we're going to put all of our fishermen as you guys will see in a minute i'm going to show you how we place the villagers in and keep them under control as a part of the video as well because you know having a decent functioning village is technically going to be a part of how our iron farm is working now you may have heard that the iron farm is actually working already so let's just go and take a quick look out here as in here as well so you guys can see the inner workings of all of it let's let's just fly through here so you guys 
guys can see how you might construct this. I came in here and I decided this block would be the center of the village. So then we came down inside of here and you can see that's the wooden block. So we'll use that as reference in a second when we get to where the beds all are. So I made my usual five by five kill chamber. You saw how this was constructed earlier on. You see these are spawning nice and fast, putting everything in there. With the buttons, the exact same kill chamber as we had earlier. With my little access point right here into my storage. I actually ended up shifting the storage over one because I wanted to be able to get around nice and easy, make it so that we can go through. So this is still the middle of my village. So you can see the middle of my village is 1724 and the Z coordinate is 223. This is where all of my beds are kept. Now, I actually bought a villager down here because it is useful to make sure that you have a villager that is within range of the beds. Now, a villager does need to be within a few blocks of the beds to detect them and turn them into a village. So I bought a villager down here and decided I would make him a farmer because that way we can take the poppies out of the chest, put them into the composter or with your iron, make yourself a hopper so you can just stack them in like that. That's going to turn into bone meal for us, which is rather nice. And so in terms of measurements, you can see this is the center. In terms of thickness of the beds, we didn't really go with that, but I did want to keep it square. So I took the amount off all of the sides so that it was a nice regular shape. But you can see we're going to come across one, two, three, four, five. And then again on this side, one, two, three, four, five. And I wanted to make sure we had at least a couple of beds thick. But either way, we've got a ton of beds in here and I could add way more because I've gone so far this way. If I add any beds on this direction, that's not actually going to cause me any problems, which is quite kind of cool. And so because I went out by five, I knew I needed to take five off of each side. And I actually think I went, I went a little bit too small. From the center, that means that we can go out by 27. But I went out by, I think, like 25. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, so you can see this is actually where the 25 is. I bought it in slightly so they can actually have extra beds. So the actual boundary of my village comes out to here. And then 25 the other way would actually bring it out to about here. So I went, I actually went a bit, a bit safe with mine. <laughs> my family are going to kill me if they ever watched this video because I made them do it within this little square. We had an extra few blocks on either side. And then in terms of height, we know that we can come up by, I think it's 10 from this floor. So we can actually go up to 70 from this floor block right here. So if I was to do this, you can see that that is how high I can build job blocks. Hopefully it have been clear. This is where you can place your villagers job block or even if you take that as just your villagers, that should still be pretty accurate anyway. Within that square is going to make it so that the center of the village or the potential center of the village never changes. What that means for us is that we can have all of the villagers on these bottom levels and then you can make these cool looking big houses, putting chests and stuff that we can interact with in these upper floors doesn't make any problems or anything like that whatsoever and means that basically all of the ground floor stuff will be villager stuff. Anything above that will not be. We can, of course, still build other stuff outside of that. This is my daughter's little start on going to make like an enchanting room. That's not a job block. Therefore, that is not going to extend the village. And so it's completely safe. We can go ahead. We can do that. We're going to go ahead. We'll be building a gatehouse or something like this with a little drawbridge across the little stream that we've got. Should all end up looking pretty cool. I hope you guys will come and say hello to us as we continue building up our little village. And we continue to get all of the iron that we'll ever need. Let's say you do want to do this method with your villagers and you want to keep control over them here are going to be some tips and things that you need to know whilst you are doing this first up of course you want to get your villagers in a boat so that you can lead them around and take them to the place that you want them to be so in this case for me i want them to be in my little fish market area so i'm going to bring them over i want them pretty close to where i want them i'm going to fence them in i don't want them to run off or be able to get away from what it is that i want them to do so i'm going to make sure they're all nicely fenced in so they, so they can't go anywhere and then want to place down their job blocks and in front of the job blocks you actually want to place some extra blocks this is going to make it so that they're forced to jump up and then they'll look at their block so that they'll be on top of it. From there, we're going to push them in to where we want them. Now, in this case, I've left this a little bit low, and that's on purpose. Because we're not going to put anything above these, if we put a dirt block in there, they would actually be able to just jump back out again and go running around, and we don't want that. So instead, in this case, we are going to use honey blocks. 
Now you get this by using a glass bottle on your beehives. So all you'll need is a bit of glass. Turn that into glass bottles. It's three, it's three glass for three glass bottles at the crafting station. Use that on a beehive, which you should have if you're following the series, because we did the whole farming area up at the top. And then for each four of those, you can now make yourself a honey block. Now we do need to make sure it's daytime. It looks like it's night for me. So let me just fix that. And then when we set these free, what should happen is they'll want to walk as close as they can to their job block. Oh, they've actually gone around the back way. I failed there because uh, I didn't realize they'd just walk around. But now we can lock them into place and they will now never move. There is one other thing that we need to do and a couple of warnings. Make sure that you don't have other job blocks around. Like, for example, if I'd have left a stone cutter thing there, one of them may have turned into a stonemason and we don't want that. And before we bring any more villagers in or before we put any more job blocks down now, we want to lock these guys into their professions. So we can come in here and we can see these guys are going to purchase string. Whoops. These are going to purchase or or purchase coal and we can in fact change this as well so let's say we decide we prefer to sell coal i could break this guy's block he's going to change from being a fisherman and he's going to change his trades potentially it's going to randomize each time that we do that so i've decided we're going to keep these guys as trading coal which means all we need to do is grab some coal trade it to this guy once and now that that is done even if i break this block and put it back that does not change his trades anymore. So these two are now locked in as fishermen. And so long as we don't mess around with these, they will stay trapped there forever. Now, if you are going to have them outside, make sure that zombies and the like can't get into here. So make sure you've got fences around. Make sure you have things like gates as villagers cannot open gates, which is how we trapped these guys in. So these guys have got this little walk area here, but they cannot open that gate. So therefore, these guys are trapped in here. We can reach them pretty much anyway. So you can tell like i can reach that chest so wherever they stand in here we can actually interact with these guys alternatively if you don't want to use honey blocks you can as we did with our first villagers in here simply put like a trim above them and now they can't jump at all these guys will never be able to even fidget unfortunately for them and as you can see over here we actually use honey blocks on these guys as well so these guys are all stuck in there he's actually trying to jump out right now unfortunately he can't get out because the honey block is too is too sticky if you are going to have a bit without a fence on it because for whatever reason you know you, you want to have an accessible bit or you need to do is have a block that is one block away and then from this you'll be able to jump into your town don't break a block and leave it like that this guy <laughs> my kids did that to me and i woke up in the morning all of my fletchers were gone had to get them all back in so i've actually put all of these in there twice in our survival world so that is how you keep control of your villagers and you can now steadily populate your village 